Australian scientists have made a landmark discovery about the human brain. Researchers say new findings show the shape of the brain, rather than its connectivity, is the most important factor in determining how an individual thinks, feels and behaves. For more joining us live is the health editor at the Australian newspaper, Natasha Robinson. Natasha, you've been reporting on this story today. I understand they're not saying a physically bigger brain is uh, smarter, essentially, but shape really does matter by the sounds of it. Yeah, look, this is a really um, interesting finding. It really turns a sort of century-old um, understanding of how the brain functions on its head. It's really been understood um, for a very long time that um, the brain's function is determined by sort of um, interconnectivity between different parts of the brain, so neurons kind of firing all together in a whole bunch of different um, parts of the brain and then interacting. Um, what these scientists have done, and they're from Monash University's Turner Institute, um, which, you know, intensively studies the brain. They've actually applied the kind of disciplines of physics and uh, engineering to um, the study of the brain and looked at, at about um, 10,000 different MRI um, images um, and um, kind of tried to sort of study what's going on in terms of brain geometry when the, the brain networks are firing. And what they have written about in um, Nature today is that their theory and um, what they uh, feel that they have proved in, in their experiments is that the shape or geometry of the brain is very determinative in terms of how the brain functions. So they talk about these um, sort of patterns of activity, um, with it, which they call kind of resonant patterns of activity that trigger these kind of wave-like um, sort of um, you know, uh, patterns, if, if you like, when when the, the brain actually, um, when the networks fire. And um, th these, are, these are known as eigenmodes in, um, in neural theory. And um, what they've discovered is that the, the function of, uh, sorry, the, the shape of the brain or the, the, the geometry of the brain actually influences how these um, resonant patterns of activity actually um, unfold or what they, what they look like. Um, if you like. So they've kind of likened it to, they've used a couple of analogies of, you know, um, a musical instrument. So if you take the example of a drum, you know, if you, you bash a drum, not all drums actually sound the same. And the reason they sound different is because they've got a different shape. So you've got a, you know, the, the shape of the drum will actually determine um, the, the resonance of, of the of the actual sound that comes out. And another example they, um, they've given is if you sort of take, say, you've got like a plate of jelly, and, you know, how that jelly kind of wobbles on the on the plate is determined by its actual structure um, in terms of, you know, how thick it is, how set it is, um, those types of things. I think those kinds of examples sort of help us to understand what they're what they're talking about here. It's quite an esoteric concept, but it is a really big deal in terms of um, understanding of um, brain function and we'll we'll really open up new fields of um, study and discovery in, in the neurosciences. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. It sounds like there's just so much more that researchers are still yet to learn about how the brain works. Natasha, I did want to ask you about another story you wrote about in The Australian this week, and it's about telehealth, and in particular, commercial telehealth providers who prescribe medicines without ever actually consulting the patient. It sounds like a, a risky concept. Yeah, look, it's a um, kind of brave new world of medicine. It's one that's been really concerning regulators um, for quite some time. Of course, telehealth really um, emerged um, during COVID where, the, where it was, you know, the rules were sort of um, very much relaxed so that it could become a standard part of uh, medical practice. But what that's actually spawned is an industry of commercial operators, um, some of whom are providing, you know, very worthwhile and convenient service to consumers, which they're paying for, you know, completely out of pocket. But part of this, um, these services uh, were uh, a practice known as asynchronous prescribing, where patients are given a script uh, for a medicine based on just giving some information that goes to a doctor and they review and then they come back and say, you know, yes, we'll, we'll prescribe this, this or that. And it, it, some, some of the 
you know, um, the, the companies, um, you know, took a you know pretty conservative approach in terms of look, they're just prescribing medicines that are um, that are regular medicines, they're repeat scripts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's other companies that have sprung up that um, the, their business model has really been concerning over lately. So there's a couple of um, particular companies that are just um, prescribing weight loss drugs, and that's all they're prescribing. Um, and you know the, the the drugs are prescribed by actually you know consumers sort of get actually targeted or bombarded if you like um, in social media feeds etc with weight loss kind of advertisements and then enticed to sort of click through here and you know um, you know speak to a doctor if you're you know concerned about your weight what have you and of course you need to you know meet a certain criteria in order to be prescribed the, the particular weight loss drug that they're offering and it's a subscription service but um there's no checking so you, you could you could virtually sort of say anything in your quiz and um you know um you know they say that there are checks and balances but i've actually carried out experiments and you know you you very easily can you know be prescribed these drugs um even if you may not be um they may not be indicated for you so they basically what the medical board of australia has done is that they've done a review and now they've come out and they've said look you know async we do not support asynchronous prescribing is not best practice if you are a doctor and you're engaging in this practice you're going to have to explain yourself um so it's not it's not actually banning the practice um so the telehealth companies will be able to continue to prescribe um you know in, in this fashion but they need to have consulted with the patient first or have access to the patient's record. So it's not a complete ban, but it's a winding back, and it certainly will um, be quite a challenge to the business model of some of these operators who have sprung up as, you know, med tech, health tech um, companies, um, you know, since the advent mm -hmm. of um, widespread telehealth. Yeah, an interesting move. Natasha Robinson, always appreciate you making the time. Thanks for that. Thanks, Ash. See you.